Welcome to the Spirit of Apollo. I'm your host, Mark Lesmeister. Today we're going to build the launch escape system tower from the model, and we're going to talk about two Apollo missions that faced emergency situations, Apollos 12 and 13. The Apollo launch escape system was a tower with its own rocket motors. It was mounted on top of the command module. In the event of an emergency, the rocket motors could pull the command module to safety so it could splash down into the ocean. The Apollo launch escape system was never needed during an actual flight. Probably the flight that came closest to using it was Apollo 12. Apollo 12 was launched on November 14, 1969. It was known as the pinpoint mission for the precision of its landing. The success of the Apollo 12 mission was threatened by something that happened 36 seconds after launch. In order to give you an idea of how long a 36 second time interval is, I have compressed the assembly of the launch escape system to 36 seconds. And I'm gonna play it for you here with the actual audio from the first 36 seconds of Apollo 12. 10, 9, 8, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engines running, commit. Lift off. We have lift off. We have lift off. We have lift off. We have lift off. Conrad reports the York program is in. Apollo 12 was hit by lightning 36 seconds after launch and again at 52 seconds after launch. The rocket was still flying normally, but many of the onboard systems were reporting data that made no sense whatsoever. The Electrical, Environmental, and Consumables Manager, or ECOM, on duty at the time was John Aaron. Now part of the ECOM's responsibilities was to stare at screens like you see here and try to make sense of the data. Now the data coming from the command module didn't make sense. They weren't the normal values that they were used to seeing, but they also weren't zero. Mr. Aaron remembered seeing a similar set of data during a training exercise about a year earlier. Now after the training exercise, Mr. Aaron took the time to trace the faulty data back to a piece of equipment called the SCE, or Signals Conditioning Equipment. As a result, he knew what to do. He knew he needed to switch it to its auxiliary power. So, he told the flight director, Flight, Ecom, try SCE to AUX. Now, judging by the flight recordings, there weren't a lot of people on duty at the time who even knew what the SCE was. Pete Conrad, the mission commander, said, what the hell is that? Fortunately, Al Bean was also on the command module, and he knew exactly where that switch was. Al Bean switched SCE to the auxiliary setting, and the reading started to normalize. Now, despite the lightning strikes, Apollo 12 was never really in danger of having to abort using the launch escape system. They were able to successfully complete their mission in landing on the moon. The same cannot be said for Apollo 13, which faced a far more serious problem. Apollo 13 was launched April 11, 1970, 50 years ago to the day as I record this presentation. Two days into the mission on April 13th, NASA was confronted with one of the most significant challenges it would ever face. It was shortly after a live broadcast from the command module. Flight controllers in Houston had raided up a request to stir the cryo tanks. Let's listen in on the recordings. Dan, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like it to uh, stir up your cryo tanks. In addition, I uh, have a shaft and trunnion okay. for a look at the Comet Bennett if you need it. Stand by. Hey, uh, you know, 
Got a problem here. Can say again, please. Uh, -huh. uh Houston, we've had a problem. Main B bus undervolt. Roger, main B undervolt. Stand by, 13. We're looking at it. Although they didn't know it at the time, an explosion in one of the oxygen tanks had ripped a hole in the sides of the service module. The command module was going to be unusable because they only had battery powered left. NASA was going to have to solve significant problems in order to bring the astronauts home alive. Some of the things they would do had been planned ahead of time. For example, using the lunar module as a lifeboat was built into the design parameters for the LM. Other things that they did would have to be improvised on the fly. For example, both the command module and the lunar module had a system to remove excess carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. However, these systems involved filters, and the filters for the command module didn't fit in the scrubber for the lunar module. Now, the lunar module scrubbers were not sufficient to last three astronauts for the entire duration of the mission, so NASA engineers figured out a way to use the scrubbers from the command module in the lunar module. Apollo 13 was sometimes called a successful failure because it showed what NASA could do when the worst happens. Apollos 12 and 13 help answer the question that every teacher gets asked eventually. When are we ever going to use this? When students ask me that question, I usually give them two answers. If they're asking about factual knowledge or skills, I say, I don't know when or if you're ever going to use this information again. But the point is, neither do you. We don't know what kind of information we're going to need at some time in the future. Now, if John Aaron had not taken the time to look at that data during that training exercise about a year before the Apollo 12 mission, he would have never seen that it was the signal conditioning equipment that was causing the problem. The point is, we don't know what kind of skills or information you're going to need to use in the future. We try to give you the most important things, but you should devote yourself to learning as much as possible because you never know what you're going to need to know. But I say to my students, you're not just learning information and skills here. You're learning how to solve problems. And that, as we saw in Apollo 13, is something that you're going to have to do every day of your life. You're going to have to learn how to work with other people. You're going to have to learn how to organize information. You're going to have to learn to figure out what resources you have available to you. You're going to have to improvise, adapt, and overcome. And that's something you can learn in every class. Next time, we're going to talk about the final Apollo missions and the legacy of Apollo. Until then, Godspeed.